Hello everyone, I am Umi. Today, we would like to discuss about energy analysis. Life Cycle Energy Analysis, LCEA, is an approach in which all energy inputs to a product are accounted for not only direct energy input during manufacturer, but also all energy inputs needed to produce components, materials, and services needed for the manufacturing process. An earlier term for the approach was energy analysis. With life cycle energy analysis, the total life cycle energy input is established. Our discussion today will cover introduction, cumulative energy demand, we cover definition, partial amounts, balancing boundaries. Next, we will discuss on energy content of inflammable materials, which cover fossil fuels, quantification, and infrastructure. And then, we also will cover for supply of electricity and lastly for transport. Do you know, energy analysis based on process chain analysis is, together with the material flow analysis, which is one of the centerpieces of the inventory analysis. For this, three reasons are indicated by Bowsey and Hancock. The first reason is, environmental problems are frequently coupled with energy supply and energy consumption. Secondly, the availability of resources is limited. And lastly, energy prices rising on a long-term basis lead to dependence on politically uncertain region. Next, we are going to discuss about cumulative energy demand. The cumulative energy demand approach is important for identifying and prioritizing energy saving potential. The cumulative energy demands of a product represent the direct and indirect use throughout the life cycle, including the energy consumed during extraction, manufacturing, and disposal of the raw and auxiliary materials. Partial amounts The cumulative energy demand consists of different amounts that include energy consumption in narrow sense and the content of energy resources and other materials with calorific value in the product. This will be shown in this formula when KEA, which is cumulative energy demand, is equal to KPA, which is cumulative process energy demand, plus KNA, which is cumulative non-energy demand. KPA, which is cumulative process energy demand, encompasses all traded final energy for heat, power, light, and the generation of other useful electricity value as primary energy through overall efficiency of energy supply. KPA, which is cumulative process energy demand, encompasses all. Meanwhile, the KNA, cumulative non-energy demand, is the sum of the energy content of all energy carriers employed for non-energy purpose and the inherent energy for working materials which value as primary energy. Now, we would like to talk in about balancing boundaries. The CED is very useful aggregated quantity which provides a good overview on the integrated primary energy demand of a product system. But, it has been argued that the determination of cumulative energy demand in case of certain form of primary energy, just like nuclear energy, solar energy, and wind energy is ambiguous. With that, the proposals are made for hydropower, wind power, photovoltaic energy, nuclear energy, and fuel and biomass. This is important because, from the point of view of life cycle assessment, every specification must keep on eyes on system thinking and the awareness to achieve an economic management and a lifestyle closer to the required sustainability. Now, we will discuss about energy content of inflammable materials. Firstly, we will look for fossil fuels. For your information, fossil fuels are still the most important primary energy carrier. The estimated annual extraction are of the order of magnitude of some gigametric tons, compared to the annual production of mass chemicals which only amount to some millions megatons. 
quantification. NNG carriers are quantified either in means or volume, which is the standard cubic meter in the case of cases. For energy assessment and also from the practical view of quality, energy units are however very meaningful. Infrastructure The inclusion of the construction of plants, like infrastructure and capital goods, with energy intensive goods and processes is not uniformly handled in life cycle assessment. This can be shown when Usually, these cumulative energy demands relating to construction of power plants, factories, and roads are cut off because they contribute less than 1% to the total energy. Now, let's discuss on supply of electricity. Electricity, as a special form of energy, plays an important role in life cycle assessment. It has already been pointed out that the elevation of the primary energy within this form of energy is particularly urgent. In life cycle assessment, the primary energy should be split into renewable or non-renewable. This is necessary for the conducting an impact assessment letter, in particular for the calculation of the global warming potential. This is because high electricity consumption in countries with a high proportion of fossil primary energy always imply a high global warming potential, whereas hydropower and other renewable forms of energy contribute far less. For your information, the production of electricity does not only cause the emission of in-house gases, which is carbon dioxide emitting, but also other emissions that have other impact on the environment, just like radioactive emissions and acid forming gases. For the last part, we are going to discuss on transport. Usually, there were two key figures are employed for quantification in life cycle inventory. Firstly, is passenger kilometer, which is one person is transported over a distance of one kilometer. For calculating passenger kilometer, the number of person is multiplied with the distance in kilometer. Secondly, is tone kilometer, which is a mass of one tone is transported over a distance of one kilometer. For the determination of tone kilometers, the transported mass in ton is multiplied with the distance covered in kilometer and the environmental load of the vehicle, for example, its fuel consumption which is related to the ton kilometers. Here, transportation is discussed under the aspect of energy. Without any question, energy and their correlated resource consumption represent a major problem in environmental politics. In addition, as in the case of electricity production, the emission of harmful gases and particles have to be considered as output. These data are necessary for determination of several impact categories and indicators. In particular, these are the most emission that happen, which is climate change, formation of photo accidents, terrestrial eutrophication, acidification, and also human toxicity. Now, it's time for Q&A session. The question is, in quantification method, energy carrier are quantified as mass and volume. Mm, let's think about it. It is yes or no. The answer is yes. This is because mass or volume is a standard cubic meter in the case of gases. This is very meaningful for energy assessment. Well, that's all from me. Thank you for watching and I hope you get understand about energy analysis under life cycle inventory analysis context. Until we meet again, bye!